All right, so today's lesson is on the law of signs. And the law of signs basically says, using that area of a triangle stuff, we started showing that you can use trigonometry with things that aren't right triangles. And this is just kind of an extension of that. So up until this point, we've dealt with right triangles and only right triangles, with the exception of what we did with the area of a triangle. In real life, obviously, there's lots of careers that involve connections between the angles and segments and not right triangles. So how do we do all that? That's kind of the idea here, is there's lots of triangles that aren't right triangles. Can trigonometry still be helpful? And the answer to that is yes. So the first part says construct altitude AD and label it X. So let's see. Instead of constructing it, I'm just going to draw it. So here's AD, and they want me to label that X and it says label each side with the appropriate letters A, B, and C. So A is across from side A, B is across from side B, and C is across from side C. What type of triangles are A, D, B? A, D, uh, B, and A, D, C. Well, both of them have a right angle, so they're right triangles. Duh. I'm literally writing duh. Explain how you know. Duh. There's a right angle. All right, now find the exact ratio for sine B and sine C. So I'm going to come over here and say, all right, sine B should be opposite over hypotenuse, right? So sine B opposite from B in the right triangle, because SOHCAHTOA only applies to right triangles. Reason being, SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H, opposite hypotenuse, only right triangles have a hypotenuse. So when we want to do sine B using a ratio opposite to hypotenuse, I have to deal with the right triangle including B. So right triangle including B. Opposite is X. Hypotenuse of this triangle that includes angle B would be C. So sine B equals X over C. Okay, fine. Um, then we want sine C. Okay, fine. Sine C again from this side now, would be opposite over hypotenuse, so x over b. And then it says solve each of your answers in part c for x. What does that mean, solve for x? Well, solve for x means get it in x equals form. So if sine b equals x over c, I'm going to multiply both sides by c, and say c sine b equals x. And then if I have sine c equals x over b, I can multiply by b and get x equals b sine c. Okay, cool. But I'm guessing, before I even scroll down, these are both set equal to x, so it doesn't mean that these are actually equal to each other. Totally means that. So since your equation and d are both equal to x, we're going to set them equal to each other. c, oops, I didn't mean to write an equals there. c sine b equals b sine c. And then what we do from here is our formula that we want to get to is we want to get it in a fraction form. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide both sides by C, which gets me sine B equals B sine C over C. And then I'm also going to divide both sides by B. So I'm going to write it as 1 over B times 1 over B. That's the same as dividing by B. So those guys would cancel, and I'd end up with sine b over b equals sine c over c. And that's where this comes from. All right, well, Mrs. Viver, why on earth did we do all that? It looks like we just kind of moved some stuff around because you told us to. Well, yeah, that's true. We did just move some stuff around because I told you to. But there's a reason. If we do that, I can get the same thing to work out for A and C and not just B and C. So let's sketch altitude BE. Fine. Label it Y. This would be side B. This would be A. That would be C. If I want to do the exact same thing, sine A being opposite over hypotenuse, I'm going to get Y over C. Sine C is going to be y over a, opposite over hypotenuse, which means c sine a equals y, and a sine c equals y. So I have c sine a equals a sine c, 
And if I divide by C, sine A equals A sine C over C. And if I move the A, this should look repetitive. I end up with sine A over A equals sine C over C. And if it's sine A over A equals sine C over C, and sine B over B equals sine C over C, doesn't that mean all three are equal? Isn't that substitution or transitive property? Yeah, explain why. Substitution. Substitution says that sine A over A has to now equal sine B over B, and basically that all three of them are equal, and that's the law of sines. The law of sine says for any triangle you have, right triangle, acute, obtuse, doesn't matter, for any triangle you have, if you take the ratio of the sine of an angle and its opposite side, that ratio is equal for no matter what angle you use. Now, long story short, what do you need that for? You can use it to solve for sides and angles that you don't know, and it's actually quite simple to use. So let's go through and do a couple examples here. So, it says in triangle ABC, A is 12, sine A is a third, sine C is a quarter, find C. Okay, well, tells me about a triangle that I can't see, so I'm going to draw it. A is 12, all right, so I'll put the 12 there. Sine of A is a third. Now, I don't know what angle A is, but I know it's sine is a third, so I'm going to write it in there just kind of as a placeholder. Sine C is a fourth. Okay, find. Find C. Okay. Well, the law of sine says sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. Now, what does that really mean? In layman's terms, this means the sine of an angle divided by its... Nope, that's a misused apostrophe divided by its opposite side is equal to the sine of another angle over its opposite side. So it doesn't matter which of these two you use as long as you use an angle in its opposite side. So for here, there's an angle in its opposite side. So the sine of A, which is one third, divided by A, equals the sine of C, which is one-fourth, divided by side C. Sine of A over A equals sine C over C. If you're a formula person, you just use the formula. Sine A goes on top, the side goes on the bottom. Sine C goes on top, uh, side goes on the bottom. And now I have a proportion, so I'm going to cross multiply, so I get one-third C equals one-fourth times 12, which is three. If I want to get rid of the one-third, I'm going to multiply by three. C equals nine. The other way to do these is instead of giving you the sine of the angle, they give you the angle itself. So in triangle wax, W is six root two. So the side across from W is six root two. Angle W is 45 degrees. Angle A is 105, and side A is what I need. The law of sine says the following. If you know angles and their opposite sides, you can solve for missing parts. So the sine of an angle, we'll do 105, divided by its opposite side, A, is equal to the sine of a different angle, divided by its opposite side. Angle over side, angle over side, as long as they're opposite. And then we cross multiply. So I have A sine 45 equals 6 root 2 sine 105. Divide by sine 45 to solve for A. And we end up with, let's pull a calculator out here. So in the calculator, I'm going to write 6 radical 2 times the sine of 105. I'm going to remember to end my parentheses because now I have to divide by the sine of 45. I do all that in my calculator, da da da. 
and it says A is 11.5911. So I'm just going to call it 11.6 and be happy with that. And really, that's the law of sines. The law of sines just says you take the sine of an angle, put it over its opposite side, set it equal to the sine of another angle, doesn't matter which one, over its opposite side, and cross multiply. Wham, bam, thank you, man, and you're done. All right, so we got to end with a joke. We have a dumb dinosaur joke today. What does a triceratops sit on? His triceratops. <laughs>